In this video, we take a look at how to represent positive integers in binary. So we live in an analog world. All of our perceptions from sound to touch and sight can be measured on a continuous sinuating line. Take this simple example of turning a light on and off again. To us, it might appear that the light immediately changes from one state to another. If we could slow time down, however, we would notice a gradual increase of light followed by a gradual decrease, which can be represented by the curved line. Digital systems, such as computing devices, don't operate like this. In our digital representation, this light exists in one of two binary states, either on or off, and it switches instantly between them, as shown here. So let's remind ourselves what binary is. A binary digit, or bit, is a zero or a one. Having just two states makes it simple to build electronic devices that use these two states. For example, in RAM, data can be represented with capacitors. They either hold a charge, one, or they don't hold a charge, zero. Having further states would make the components more difficult to build and potentially more prone to error. Data on hard disk can be stored using magnetism with north and south polarity representing one or zero. Data on optical disks can be stored such that light from laser can either be reflected from the surface or not, zero or one. And data on memory sticks can be stored by trapped electrons or free electrons, zero or one. So have you ever asked yourself the question, what exactly is 01100110 or indeed any sequence of binary digits? When you first look at it, you probably think, well, that has to represent something. That's probably a number. But as you've learned from the previous part of this video, everything in a computing system has to be stored as a series of zeros and ones, for example, high and low voltages. This pattern of bits could actually represent many different things. It all depends how we interpret it. So, for example, if we shoved those pattern of bits 01100110 through the ASCII character set, what would pop out would be the lowercase letter F. The exact same pattern of bits interpreted as a signed binary integer in two's complement would result in the number 102. And indeed, the same bit pattern could be interpreted in many different ways and could represent many different things. If this was a black and white image, which was using one bit to store each pixel, then this sequence of bits would represent eight black or white pixels. If this was a 24 bit color image, then this bit pattern could represent the value for the red, blue or green element of a single pixel. And if this was passed through a digital to analog converter, then this pattern of bits would represent part of an analog waveform that was coming out of a speaker. The point here is that there is no way of knowing what a particular pattern of bits actually represents until you know how to interpret that data. So Deanery, or the base 10 number system, is the number system which you will be most familiar with. It's the one that you've been learning ever since you were a small child, ever since you first started to count. It contains just 10 unique digits, 0 through to 9, hence why it's known as base 10, because there's 10 unique digits available. Now, incidentally, why do you think our number system has evolved in this way? Well, the answer is that no one actually really knows the answer but it could quite possibly have something to do with the fact that we have a total of 10 fingers and thumbs. So it became natural to count up to 10 on our digits. 
With a deanery system, we have no unique digit for the number 10, or indeed for any number higher than 9. We have to put the digit 1 and 0 together in order to get the number 10. So let's look at how that actually works with larger numbers. Well, we'll start with the 10, and obviously I've written that out here. Now I've got two leading zeros on the beginning, but that doesn't affect the fact that this is the number 10, 0, 0, 1, 0. You will know from basic maths at primary school that the weighting of the headings in each of these columns goes up by 10 each time. So what I have here is naught to thousands plus naught to hundreds plus one in the tens column plus naught in the ones column. So the number 10. If we take a bigger number now, so 4273, the exact same principle is applied. The column on the far left is our thousands columns, so we have 4 times a thousand. We add that to the next column, which is 2 lots of 100. We add that to 7 lots of 10 and 3 lots of 1s with 4,273. Now, of course, we don't perform that calculation in our head. When we see the number 4273, we are so used to it now that we simply read it straight out as 4,273. Notice once again how the column weightings, that's the headings, are increasing by a factor of 10 every time we move one space to the left. And this is because decimal is a base 10 number system. Now, along with the base 10 deanery or decimal number system that we're used to, there are two other number systems that you need to be familiar with for your exams. That's base 2 binary and base 16 hexadecimal. The rest of this video will focus on base 2 binary. So with the base 2 binary number system, we only have two unique digits. So a zero and a one, and that's it. All other numbers in binary must be made up of a combination of these two digits. So what is the number I've got represented here? Well, the first thing you'll notice is the weighting of the column headings has changed. Starting on the right, we have the ones column, then the twos, then the fours, then the eights. It's doubling each time or timesing by two, and that's because we have a base two number system. So we just apply the same rules we did for the decimal system. Here I have naught lots of eights added to naught lots of fours. I've got one, two, and I'm adding that to one, one. So the number one, one in binary is three in decimal. And you need to read this as one, one, and obviously not 11, because an 11 is a decimal number. So let's do exactly the same thing, but this time for a slightly larger number. The process, although, is identical. So starting on the left here, I have a 1 in the 8 column. So I've got 1 lots of 8. I'm adding that to 0 lots of 4. I'm adding that to 1 lot of 2. And finally, 1 lot of 1. So I have an 8 plus a 2 plus a 1. So this number is 11 in decimal. So the binary number 1011 is 11 in decimal. And again, just to reiterate, the weighting of the column headings is times in by 2 every time we move to the left because binary is a base 2 number system. So let's just recap some of those basics. The base 2 binary number system only has two unique digits, 0 and 1. All other numbers in binary have to be made up of a combination of those two digits. Note again how the column weighting headings are increased by a factor of 2 every time we move to the left, and that's because binary is base 2. Larger numbers will increase the number of digits required. For example, in our demonstration here, the smallest non-negative deanery number we could represent would be 0, and it would be a string of 8 zeros. The largest non-negative deanery number we could represent would be 255, and that obviously would be a 1 in every single column. Now in the exam, you also need to be able to convert base 10 deanery or decimal numbers back to base 2 binary equivalents. So let's convert the deanery number 
77 into binary. So the first thing we do is we look at the left hand column. That's the most significant bit, the MSB. This has a weighting of 128. Now the number we want to store is 77. So we say, does 128 fit into 77? Well, the answer is it doesn't, clearly. So we put a zero in that column and we've still got all 77 left to deal with. We now move on to the next column. The next column is 64. Well, 64 does fit into 77. It fits into 77 once with 13 left over. So we put a one in this column and we move on to the next. Now, remember we have 13 left over and this column weighting is 32. So how many 32s can we fit into 13? Well, the answer is none. So we put a naught here and we move on. How many 16s can we fit into 13? The answer again is none, so we move on. How many 8s can we fit into 13? Well, we can fit one whole 8 into 13, and we've got 5 left, so we put a 1 here. How many 4s can we fit into 5? Well, again, we can fit 1 in, and we have 1 left over. How many twos can we fit into one? None, with one left over. And finally, how many ones can we fit into one? The answer is one. And now we have zero left over. We can check we've got the correct binary by adding up the columns that have ones in. So we have a one in the 64 column, plus an eight, plus a four, plus a one which is 77. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do we represent positive integers in binary?